One of the things that you want to do is be able to dissipate energy. If it's held like this and you impact the side of it with a projectile, it has to propagate energy quickly up and down the length. In effect, the material works like a soccer net, spreading the bullet's impact out over a wide area. So rather than slice through the fabric, its energy is dispersed. Even so, one type of material alone isn't enough to stop a bullet. So armor utilized four different layers of fabric, each with slightly different properties. The idea of creating lightweight, flexible armor isn't new. The earliest forms were developed by the Japanese, who used thick wads of silk to stop low-velocity musket bullets. But in order to stop a high-velocity bullet from a modern gun, you need to create a piece of underwear that is both flexible and has the strength of steel. Here at Armour Holdings, they manufacture some of the most sophisticated flexible armour ever developed. The problem is to create a garment that's not just capable of stopping bullets, but is still lightweight and thin enough to work in. But unlike cheap sportswear from your local mall, you certainly won't be finding any imperfectly made jackets in the bargain bin, because every one of these vests has to comply with strict government specifications. And there's just one way to do quality control. That's with a handgun. First, the vest is placed on a clay mannequin. Then it's shot at point-blank range. And the results filmed with a slow-motion camera. 
Seen here in ultra slow motion, it's possible to follow the bullet as it blasts from the gun at almost 250 meters a second. That's the same speed as a jumbo jet. When it strikes the vest, each individual layer of fabric acts to dissipate its force, causing waves to spread across its surface like ripples on the surface of water. When Bruce removes the jacket, the mark on the clay shows him how the bullet's energy has been spread and dissipated. The jacket has done what it's designed to do, and that is prevent the bullet penetrating the torso. Luckily for Sergeant Seaman, he was wearing a vest the day he came under fire. It is rumored that President Obama was wearing a bulletproof suit during the inauguration. Of course, the Secret Service will say nothing about the matter. But if he was, it almost certainly came from Miguel Caballero, the world's high fashion manufacturer of protective armor. Caballero has taken advantage of the war between drug cartels and the government in his native Colombia to create a new technology of fabric design. Your canoe may well be made of the same material they use to make bulletproof vests. That's right, many canoes today are made of woven aramid fibers better known by the trade name Kevlar. For canoes, though, they use a lesser density, since presumably no one will be shooting at you. A Kevlar canoe weighs about half as much as a wooden or aluminum canoe, and it's virtually maintenance-free. They build these canoes from several layers of Kevlar fabric, glued together to create a solid laminate material. It all begins with the fiberglass mold of the canoe's hull. The first step is to spread resin over its interior. Once that's done, they spread a sheet of Kevlar over the resin and rub it against the mold to push out any air bubbles. Then they trim off the excess fabric. Using a squeegee, they force out any excess resin and stretch the fabric until it's taut. This step ensures the laminate will turn out strong and smooth. They repeat this entire process with the second layer of Kevlar. Then run a roller over everything to expel any excess...